Today I'm making a rack to hold these OCD boxes on the wall up here. Welcome back to Goth with Andy Man. As I say, today I'm going to be making a rack to hold these screw organisers on the wall. They've been taking up bench space for far too much time now and I just need to get them out the road. Um, they're very heavy. If you imagine every each one of these probably weighs five to maybe between five and ten kilos. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got eight of them so far. I'm going to hopefully design it to take enough room for maybe a couple of extra ones, but I'm not entirely sure. I need to work out what sort of gap I need between them and stuff like that. And you've got the first sneak peek of me new sticker door you can see behind us there and of course uh, we've got De Resta's print up there and the master himself Norm Abram over in the corner all this other stuff is just bits and pieces me kids have made and things in case you're wondering what all this is some of it's stuff that I made when I was little um, but that's what this general area is you'll see it in a lot of videos coming up um, but yeah welcome to the sticker door Right, so you're joining us at the point where I've already cut the wood to size on the table saw and I'm ready pretty much to put everything together. So I'm going to make a plywood box for a start. It's all going to be biscuit jointed and glued. No mechanical fixings at all in this. It's also going to be a bit of a proof of concept to see how strong just biscuits and glue are on their own. And I know that they make a very, very strong joint. So I'm going to put the whole thing together, clamp it together, let the glue dry overnight obviously before putting anything heavy on it oh and before i forget i've still got my jacket and hat on it's may and it's baltic outside it's eight degrees i don't know what that is in big numbers but it's cold it's like as cold as it was in winter and it's may so what's going on there uh would really like it to get a bit warmer anyway so that's why i've got my jacket on but uh i'm gonna plow on
Right, it's getting toasty in here now. Got my jacket off. This shop heats up quite quick, so it's not too bad. I was just gonna chat a little bit about this while I'm giving it a clean up. So I'm getting the pencil marks off now, just with a damp cloth. You can sand them off or you can um, use a rubber. But I find with a damp cloth it comes off fine. All I would say is get your pencil marks off well before the glue is dried because what happens is um, your glue residue that's in here if you kind of obviously that glue residue when you're wiping it with a cloth is kind of seeping into the wood and it's almost sealing the wood and it's really hard to get the pencil marks off once that glue's dried you can see pencil in fact in here we've got some marks where the glue's already dried quite well and those pencil marks are really tricky to get off. I've made a few balls ups with this, but hey, it's a workshop project. And this is one of the things when, you, when you're trying to film a project and do the work at the same time, sometimes you just get distracted by moving the camera to the right position and trying to make sure your arms are not obscuring a shot and stuff like that, and you stop thinking. And I have done this in several places, which I shall show you. It's not the end of the world, but those with a keen eye might have spotted it on the footage, what mistakes that I made. Um, the first mistake, which is such a schoolboy error, but again, I, I was just distracted, not thinking. First mistake, when you're using a biscuit jointer, you need to always reference off the same edge. So if you're doing a 90 degree joint and you're putting a biscuit hole downwards like that, then if I'm referencing off that edge against the bottom here, then for this side, I need to reference against the bottom edge sitting on the worktop. So at some point, I haven't done that for this edge this one's perfect, but this edge, I must have flipped the piece without noticing or something and I've referenced off the wrong, the opposite edge, if that makes sense. So I've had the work piece flipped round and that means my biscuit joints are no longer aligned. And that's why I've got this little ridge here. I don't have it on this side, it's perfect on this side, but on this side, I don't know if you can hear, but I've got a little ridge there. It's not the end of the world because that's going against a wall. If this was a customer project, I would have had to have started again. We're on a new piece of wood. Because once you've made that mistake, you can't reuse it, really. Um, the other mistake I made, which was uh, even more ridiculous, is that on this edge, I put the biscuit slots in the wrong edge. And that's why it's always a good idea, when you're doing biscuit joints, just to draw out the shape of the wood on the piece that you're going to be putting the joints into. And that way there's no mistake when you come in, it's obvious where you're going to be putting your biscuit joints. Again, you know, I was rushing, not thinking, thinking more about the camera. And, but I just wanted to show you the kind of balls ups that can be made. And I've put the, those in the wrong place. Again, it's going to be against the wall. It's not the end of the world. If it was a customer project, I would have had to have started again on a new bit of wood. What I've had to do to compensate for this, because obviously these slots are now knackered, is I've put new biscuit slots in here, here, and here. I've used these ones as well, but I've, all, I've removed 50% of the material, so these slots aren't gonna be as strong. Um, it's just a mistake, but it's a workshop project. It doesn't really matter. What I would rather do is show you the kind of, of mistakes that can be made when doing biscuit joints, and then you can think about that more if you're gonna be doing them. But this is all cleaned up now. The nails are really just there to hold it together, by the way. They're not really providing any structural support. It's the biscuits and the glue that are doing all of the structural work. The nails really are just there to hold. You see, I've got perfectly flush edges on the front. That's the bit that matters because that's the bit you're gonna see. And this is gonna be a, a heavy project. I will try and weigh it, but I would suspect once this is fully loaded up, wouldn't surprise us if it's at least 50 kilos, maybe more. Um, I'm not sure. But all of the weight is going to be taken. Obviously, this will be screwed into the wall. 
and really all the weight's being taken by the sides and these back joints. The bottom and top are doing very little other than uh, decoration and keeping the piece square. Obviously they're going to provide a certain amount of structural support for these side pieces but the majority of the support's coming from these back two edges really. So if you imagine once these are loaded up with the racks, um, these are the metal bleh, these are the metal frames that I'm going to use to hold to slide them in and out. Really what I should do is leave this overnight for the glue to dry but I don't, since it's nailed it's not going to go anywhere but obviously I'm not going to load it up and put it on the wall today until the glue's completely dried. Right, I'm going to crack on. 